Welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to be looking at the append function and one particular detail with it which probably won't ever catch you out but if you start doing a lot of mutable kind of stuff, might do. So let's look at append up here. We have two lists and we're going to append them together and we get one list back, one new list with all the elements of the other lists and that's great. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, but there is a detail in the spec about this which might come as a surprise. So let's have a look. Um, first we have append. Let's look at its description. It returns a new list. This is the concatenations of the copies. Excellent. We've given it some little lists. We want them to copy them and concatenate them together. Lists are left unchanged. Great. So the original ones that we pass in aren't going to get mutated at all. The list structure of each of the lists except the last is copied. The last argument is not copied. This becomes very. This is very important. This is the point. It becomes the CDR of the final... Fine, uh, final dotted pair of the concatenation of the preceding lists or is returned directly if there are no, other, if there are no preceding non-empty lists. Okay, sounds like a lot of words. It's written in a very spec kind of way, which is what we want from a spec, but what is it saying? Okay, so we are trying to concatenate A and B and C and D. Let's write this out longhand actually. So we're going to do cons A, uh, cons oops, B nil. Okay, so you can see that that's that's the same as the list AB. And we also have another one, almost the same, but with the um, symbols C and D in it. These are the two things um, that we're going to concatenate together. So what does it mean to concatenate? We're going to take this list and we're going to put it in the position of the CDR of the last console in this chain. So here's the first console, here's the second one, here's nil, and we're replacing that with the other list. So that's great. So basically what it means is if we copied these sublists and we just change, we make a change to the CDR, that last CDR on each one, then we can attach the next one. We just take the next one and put it in that place. Take the next one, put it in the, that place. But the last one we don't need to do anything with. There's nothing afterwards that we need to chain on. So it can be left unchanged. So this gives Common Lisp an opportunity to say, hey, we don't actually need to make another copy of this. We don't need to do that extra work. Um, but that, and again, like if we're doing functional type programming where we're not mutating things, everything's fine. You'll never know the problem. Um, but if you start going and mutating these lists in some way, which is a little odd, I, don't, I haven't seen this in real code, but it's worth knowing about anyway. Um, yes, you can get some interesting results. So let's have a look. We've got list one and list, sorry, list zero and list one here. Let's um, bring those up. And what we're going to do is, in this test function, we're going to append them together and store that in foo. And then the second element, we're going to set to the keyword foo. And the sixth element, we're going to um, set to bar. And then we are going to return this new list. And we're going to see what happens. So the result is exactly what we'd expect, right? We took A, B, and C, concatenated it, with, or appended it to um, 1, 2, 3. And then we replaced this element with foo and this element with bar. Now, here's the important bit. Because append only copies all the lists except the last one, we can say it another way, because append doesn't copy the last list that it's appending together, this is exactly the same list in memory. So if you mutate this, or the, this part of the newly created list, then you are going to be mutating the original, which means if we look at list zero, it's fine. Even though we made a change in this position here, which would have been right in the middle of it. But if we look at list one, we can see that it now has a bar at the end. So remember that append is going to take them and copy all of them except the last one. And then it's going to modify each of those little ones it's copied. Okay, stitch these together except the last one, which just gets put in place and the whole new thing is returned. So it is a new list. It does contain all the values of the original lists, but the last one is not copied. So if you start mutating into that structure, you are going to change the original. Um, if you don't want that, you can always use copy list, and you can copy a list. So if you, let's actually go, um, again, this is, this is not stuff I've seen um, be necessary in real code, but let's do this anyway. Copy list, A, B, C, D. All right, that peculiarity out of the way. Um, I'll see you in the next little bit of Lisp.